What is going on guys? My name is Hussein and in this video I want to talk about 10 things that you can do on your front-end application to improve the performance. And these steps apply to any programming language, it applies to both mobile applications or web application or even desktop application that basically act like a front-end application. So if you're new here guys, I usually talk about back-end uh, technologies, but this is a little bit of a different video. And most of these tips and tricks that you can apply uh, in your front-end application is actually inspired by how the back-end is built. So if you're interested, stay tuned. So, all right, tip number one, use optimistic queries. And what does that mean? That means if you if the if your user is about to click a button and expecting some sort of a result and and that res, that request is actually going to the server and you're expecting back a result in order to sh change something in the user experience change that based on the optimism that the server will respond with the correct result an example with is instagram and it's doing it today right if you hit the instagram like button what they will do is actually they will like that they will animate that uh, picture or whatever they, they will actually show you that you liked it despite that server didn't actually respond you can actually try that and uh, turn on flight mode and you can see that uh, they will r undo that effect after a few seconds right so that's actually always a good idea right so optimistic queries change the user experience and send the request asynchronously and just move on and if and if there's something, if, if, uh, if the state that came from the server actually matches what you did, good. If it doesn't, which is rarely the case, then you can adjust, right? So that's the tip number one. Tip number two, very popular, paging, the idea of paging. Especially if you're listing, right? If there is, you're doing some sort of a listicle in your application, you're listing pictures, you're listing comments, you're listing things, you have to do paging. You cannot do, uh, select star from uh, that table and you have an unbounded query that means there is no where clause first this kills your database and this responds with a huge payload right and what do you do with this payload right you cannot even show million results in your application so what you do is essentially okay i am uh, i just opened the app i'm gonna pull the first 10 pages right and you and as you scroll down, you make another request to get the next 10 pages and so on. This way you slowly, first of all, you reduce the uh, load on the back end. And also at the same, at the same time, you have very few things to work with. Plus, as a human being, we don't really cannot look at 100 pictures at the same time, right? So you can tweak that a little bit, but that's the essential the idea. Paging, very popular. Lazy loading, third tab. So... Another popular property or uh, performance of an application, if you have, and this goes a little bit of, with paging, but if you're scrolling through an application and you're, you're paging the results, let's say, hey, I wanna get, to, to get the first 20 comments or 20 pictures, you, as you get these comments back or these pictures back, you can be pragmatic about what you display to your user. Since the user screen is only seeing one picture, only load that picture, right, as the user is actually seeing it. Don't load the next 10 pictures. Yes, you already have the payload, but don't go and actually load all of them because that will be a waste of memory, waste of CPU resources, and you can't, the user will start feeling it, something is happening, right? Fourth tip, another obvious one, request what you need exactly and a popular example is using graphql as a query language right so if you're populating let's say the comments section of instagram then what you need to do is well you need what do you need you need the actual text you need the user and you need how many times this comment has been liked maybe and other information the date and so on don't request the followers, for example, for that user, it's useless, right? So these are very obvious things, but if you designed your user experience first, you will know that you will need to design your backend 
based on what the front end will look like. GraphQL very, very nice for this application. Obviously, it will simplify what you need and, and uh, unlike REST API where you have to get everything right because REST API is kind of an all or nothing kind of a thing, right? Once you build it, yeah, you can go around with it. And I, I talked about REST API and GraphQL. Check out that uh, video, guys, if you're interested to know more about that. So yeah, if you're, uh, that's the worst thing you can do is select star from a database because if you have, uh, if you're selecting certain fields from a table, make sure these fields are indexed, right? Especially if you're very frequently accessing those, right? The idea is you you need to request only what you need exactly, right? So if you have a huge table and this table, you're selecting star from everything. So you get bring all the field. That's a lot of work for the database, especially if you're selecting a lot of rows. So what you need to do is select only the things that is optimized by your query execution plan in your database provider. So uh, if you're selecting the name a lot, maybe, maybe add a, an index there. So it will ser search in that. But if you're querying on the date, for example, maybe an add an index there because that will search there, right? So, and uh, the idea of composite indexing get into really technical, then we can go into performance reasons where uh, having the composite index with your primary key can be a good performance because you don't need to hit the actual disk. You will uh, do an index scan in this case versus a table scan, right? So you don't have to hit the table to actually fetch the whole uh, column. You will have all the information indexed and nicely in the same location. So that's some tips you can do with, with this GraphQL and the database tuning, a little bit of that. Okay, so request only what you need. And tip number five, have a connection state in your application. So that means if you lost internet connection, have it have this information stored in your app so that you don't waste resources to issue requests when you know they will absolutely fail. And YouTube does the, a great job for that. And I don't know about other apps, but I see it. I use a YouTube a lot, so I see it. If I lose connection, I get this uh whatever, banner and it says hey, your lock connection so anything i do i don't see any request going out at all right and uh the idea of having a progressive web app helps here because that little tiny proxy i forgot what they call it uh with that with the application itself help right because it will it will collect all this information and prevent you from sending these uh requests to the wire if you know they are absolutely gonna fail Right? So yeah, have a connection state. Number six, use at least recently used cache. And this is really depends on you guys. You don't have to, but this will prove very useful if you have like a huge payload that comes back from uh, from the REST endpoint or the GraphQL or the gRPC uh, endpoint. And that, these have a lot of content to show right and as you the user scroll 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 if you have especially those uh, very curious users they go all the way right and stalk someone uh, until like four years and they accidentally like a picture like seven years later right that, that, that's kind of creepy but if, for, for those, if, you, if, you, if you're loading all these pictures and all these comments and everything in memory right you'll very quickly run a RAM, right? So what you need to do is like use some sort of at least recently used cache so that this, as you start loading stuff, add them to the cache, add them to the cache, and as they are getting stale and older, just uh, remove them from the cache. So that's a very thing to just keep your memory. If you have unlimited memory, be my guest, keep that cache flowing and keep storing everything, right? I know the YouTube app doesn't, revoke those and for the, the the thumbnail for example i tried it and i went all the way down around like three thousand videos and they kept all these thumbnails so i went to obviously they maybe they store it at the desk eventually right and some sort of a cache on the desk but yeah they obviously have evicted from the memory but that's just something to keep in mind least recently used cache useful because the more memory you have, the more memory you're using, the slower your application will get because you'll get start getting paged out because, by the operating system and you start hitting the desk a lot for no particular reason just because you have a lot of stuff in memory that you don't really use, right? So 
Simplify. Keep it simple. Use that cache if necessary. Number seven, use HTTP2 when applicable because some cases it's not really applicable and that's the most powerful thing with well, HTTP2 if your client library programming language supports it definitely then yeah because multiplexing multiple requests if you have to send multiple requests I implore you to avoid it but sometimes you can't you have to send multiple requests at the same time HTTP2 will have a single beautiful TCP connection between you and the server and you all you will start sending all these requests in parallel as different streams right instead of having multiple TCP connection that you round robin through right in HTTP1 for example so if you're using gRPC you're covered gRPC will take care of all of that stuff for you right so that's another advantage of using gRPC because you're using HTTP2 and it takes care of all the streaming and all the requests and does all that for you. So yeah, use HTTP2 for multiplexing. Again, if applicable, sometimes it's not, right? Your client, you're using a Java HTTP client that doesn't support HTTP2. What do you do? Number eight, if your application supports notification at all, try to group these notifications as much as possible before throwing it at the user, right? And Instagram is, is a perfect example for this. When you open Instagram, you, you will say, okay, oh, 128 picture, uh, 128 people liked your picture and you had like 30 comments. I don't have that many. That will just be a dream. But <laughs> yeah, so you'll have a lot of, they will group that because it's always better to group this information and then ship it once instead of, bothering the user and, and consuming these extra resources because the moment you start uh, when you get a push notification you start throwing it at the user unless the user asked for it that's another question but if they didn't ask for it then don't don't throw that push notification immediately because the if they get a lot of those then it's get out of control it it's just easier to group everything server side and then when the user logged in, and that's a state that you need to have, oh, I, I just logged in, right? And what does that mean, right? You can you might say, like, what does that mean, logged in, right? I, that doesn't mean I just put my username and password. I mean, actually, I am now active using the app, right? Tip number nine, avoid expensive queries, even if it's at the expense of a bad user experience. Let's give me an example, right? Go to Twitter or go to Instagram to go to YouTube. There you cannot find a tool or, or a way, a user experience that allows you to batch and follow people. There it doesn't exist, right? And the reason is, first of all, they don't want people to just massively unfollow people. Second is for performance reason, because if you start having a tool to uh, say, oh, check, book, check, 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 I want to select all and then unfollow or, or even follow. First of all, spammy. Second of all, that REST endpoint or that GraphQL endpoint, that's going to take a huge amount of processing power. And if, if a lot of people start doing it, right? So what what the Insta Instagram have is actually a very bad user experience. So you they they have literally buttons that says, okay, follow, 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 or unfollow, unfollow. You have to click annually right and that's for them that's actually easier to handle than if if like a flood of requests and say okay unfollow these hundred people all the time they try not not to give you these expensive queries as much as possible and you shouldn't right this is more like a back-end thing more like a front-end but it's just something to keep in mind and finally tip number 10 is try to build your user experience so you have the minimum number of requests to the server possible so that if you open the application if you can group requests together and send one request do that but if it's not possible then you have you can't you have to send multiple requests because the first request the first request will depends on the second request results then you don't have an option but always aim to minimize the number of requests because the the minimum the the less requests you have they're better obviously as front-end engineer questions to you guys what tips did i miss what tips do you guys recommend to improve the performance of uh, front-end applications and what could we do at the back end to kind of facilitate that 
let me know in the comment section below and hopefully if you enjoyed this video give it a like if you learned anything give it a like if you didn't learn anything give it a dislike because that will force me to do better and in the future i'm gonna see you in the next one you guys stay awesome goodbye